Welcome in, everyone, to the Paldean Grand Prix, a.k.a. Scarlet and Violet Treasures of Ruin race between Spider-Sea, Dynam, New Amber, and Etiquette. It's a hot day in Paldea, but not hotter than what this competition is going to be for our runners. So we are not going to waste any time as these runners will be getting set. So let's count it down together, everybody. In three, two, one, go, go, go! And they're off in the Baldean Grand Prix. So this is the Treasures of Ruin race, a category extension for the Scarlet and Violet game. This isn't uh, anything that's going to be particularly normal in terms of the gameplay. Uh, overall, it's not going to be uh, the normal uh, gym battles or the Elite Four, no Starfall bases. No, this is just kind of a random uh, objective. And in this case, it'll be uh, fighting and defeating the four Treasures of Ruin. That would be Wo Chen, Ting Lu, Qian Pao, and Chi Yu. This will be a very movement heavy category, but all four runners uh, doing pretty well. Some have been practicing a bit more than others, but I have their qualifying time since this is technically a race. In fourth place, it was Etiquette with a one hour, 10 minute best time going into today. In third place, it was Spider with a 106.28. On the front row, it was Amber at a 105.50. And pole position by Dynam with a best time of one hour, four minutes, and 52 seconds. So like I said, movement heavy category, and there isn't going to be all that many fights. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's just going to be seven fights in total, the four Treasures of Ruin, and three of the Titans just to acquire uh, a bit of movement speed. But all of our runners now getting the first of 32 ominous black stakes. These are scattered all throughout the main Paldea region. Eight stakes each for the four Treasures of Ruin legendary Pokemon. So a bit of a treasure hunt, if you will. I mean, that, that is what they've been tasked to do from the uh, Academy themselves. Uh, all runners running on the Scarlet version of the game, which uh, does lag a little bit less overall. So, yeah, doing their treasure hunt by fighting the Treasures of Ruin. Uh, but on their way to that first stake, you see them pick up that uh, large candy, which will be really helpful for the Pokemon that they picked for their starter, which is Quaxly in this category. And all four runners have an extremely good Quaxly to their name that is going to be uh, useful in fighting the Four Treasures of Ruin. Uh, Miascarada, you would think, has an okay time. Well, the only problem that Miascarada has in this category is that Chi Yu kind of obliterates the Weed Cat. So Quaxly it is. And these Quaxlys are all as cracked as they are jacked because they have an incredible amount of attack stats. But the first thing that we see is them racing down uh, this region to pick up a couple rare candies. We'll see who is able to get this drop down candy uh, the smoothest. A lot of movement tech involved here. And what you'll see, first of all, is uh, each runner dismount Coridon, intentionally fall off this ledge. See if they can get a slide. Spider gets it perfectly there. Dynam already a little bit ahead, though, using the, uh, the game's forgiving mechanic to warp you back up if you, quote, accidentally fall off, when in this case, it was intentionally accidentally. So that was the first candy that they were going to pick up. Uh, and a couple more rare candies along the way to help them a bit later on. But it's just that first large candy that's going to be super useful in the early game. Because as you might imagine, Cloth is going to be the first Titan acquired here. Dynam holding a short lead. Spider not too far behind. Etiquette's in third place right now. He's dropping down to activate Cloth to move. And Amber now just making that little bit of a fall. All of them doing some great movement tech. I like to call it teching to uh, get them in the right place at the right time so they don't get that harsh landing as they hit the ground. So that large candy going on Quaxley, get it to level 24. And now we are in the evolution screen for the first time. 
like most Scarlet and Violet runs, we will definitely see uh, a lot of experienced candies and rare candies picked up throughout the region. And it just so happens that they have to travel throughout the region in order to pick up a number of those candies to overlevel their main Pokemon. In this case, it is just going to outright be Quaxley. You're going to notice a bit of tech here where the Quaxley only knew uh, Workup or I believe Water Gun in some cases. Uh, I think it was just Workup for most of them, teaching Aqua Cutter. Spider is going to do Water Gun because Spider does have a bit of a higher special attack, Quaxwell. But either way, first phase of Cloth going down. Our runners still in order. Dynam, Spider, Etiquette, and Amber. And the first issue with the Cloth, of course, is that Cloth comes with the ability Anger Shell. So once it gets knocked down below half health, it will shed off its defensive stats, so it will go minus one in defense and special defense, but then increase its attack and speed stats. All of those stat buffs and debuffs are very slow, so you're going to see each of our runners do a unique set of inputs here to make sure that they can hit the cloth basically from full health. Workup's going to be the main move on most of their screens. You're going to see that first from Dynam. Spider does the same here. Now everybody's in the workup phase. Well, that was a big uh, water gun from the shelter there doing a lot of damage, but thankfully not uh, as much as half damage. You see a much lower amount of damage done on Dynam screen. And Dynam gets the first K. Oh, and it, it lives on one! The cloth lived! Just on a sliver of HP, he's going to lose all that time from all the stat buffs and debuffs from Cloth's Anger Shell. And Spider takes the quick lead, leading through the Cloth section of the game. What an overtake. And just six minutes into this hour-long category, and already a huge amount of variability... Etiquette sweeps into the turn in second place here. Dynam will still hang on to third. And Amber just finishes off Clough in fourth place. What a turn of events in the first section of the game here. So as these runners go into these Arvin cutscenes, we're going to call these pit stops. Make sure that their Coridons are well-fed and fueled up for the races here. So let's head down to our pit lane reporter, also T-Pat, that's me, and we're gonna talk to Dynam and get some input on what just happened in that first section of the game. Dynam, what happened? You were in the lead, and then all of a sudden, a sliver of HP remained on the cloth. I'll be honest, I thought that was guaranteed with my IV, apparently not. <laughs> What so must have happened is that Shelter must have low rolled the water gun in that scenario. <laughs> What's funny is I saw on Spider screen at the same time, uh, the Shelter did more than twice as much damage than Arvin Shelter on your side. So yeah. I like, couldn't believe the, the damage difference. Yeah, and this is like my 31 IV plus attack Quaxley <laughs> as well. So I'm surprised. Also the fact that it used Ice Shard. I've never seen Shelter use Ice Shard ever. <laughs> I believe the game has gone through some double battles overhaul recently, so maybe that has something to do with it. But Dynam, you've got a 31 IV uh, Quaxwell here, so that, that feels so unbelievable. But the strat, obviously, is to use Workup, and then uh, it's not Aqua Jet, it's... Um, it's an Aqua Cutter. Aqua Cutter, yes. Exactly. Yeah, that, that had to have been an unbelievable sequence of both the Shelter low-rolling and you low-rolling... Yeah, I'm going to have to calc that after this race, because new fear <laughs> unlocked. <laughs> that is pretty wild. Well, Dynam, I will let you get back to your race here now that you're getting Coridon refueled up. So best of luck to you. Hopefully you thank won't you, be missing you. any more weird unknown ranges from here on uh, out. Fingers crossed. Already an unbelievable sequence of events. You can uh, never count out. Uh, any of these runners, or in this case, uh, any of these Arvins, uh, I believe 
Arvin's Pokemon use are considered wild Pokemon. Uh, in fact, they can spawn shiny. And it has been noted before that uh, Arvin's Pokemon can appear shiny in these sections of the game where he is your quote unquote like doubles or raid partner in this case. So that Shelter might have rolled minus special attack and got a low roll and Dynam's uh, Aqua Cutter also got a low roll. That sequence of events just feels in like incredibly low, but uh, it'll be something we'll have to uh, calc back out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in hindsight, and just see how unrealistically unlikely that was. Well, Spider is off and running into the East Providence S's now, as he'll be jumping in and out of all the ledges, left and right, between all the crevasses. But you're going to notice some slightly different movement, because again, the goal of the game is to pick up these ominous black stakes. So I'll propose this to our chat who has joined us today. Uh, I am not as familiar with the lore behind why the stakes are scattered throughout Paldea. All I know is that there are eight stakes each for each treasure of Ruin. That again being Wu Chen, Ting Lu, Qian Pao, and Qi Yu. They each have eight stakes. And when you pull those eight stakes that uh, are referenced to that specific Pokemon, uh, their shrines will be activated in which you'll be able to fight them. Uh, but in this case, you will just see that the stakes are all across Paldea, and it's a big scavenger hunt. Ooh, Spider losing a little bit of time here, getting caught by a rookity, but at least the Quaxwell now up to level 25, so shouldn't have any problem running away from any of these, but still holds maybe a slight lead. It is very close now, as you see... Uh, this rare candy right before the river jump. In fact, it looks like Etiquette maybe had just taken a one-second lead, neck and neck. Slightly different approach here from these two runners. Spider going all the way down with a bit of teching. Etiquette just opting to fall on that little ledge. Ended up being about the same amount of time between both players. Dynam also going for this teching strat where you just dismount, uh, dismount and remount so you avoid the harsh fall animation. Uh, in this case, Etiquette went for a little strat where there's a there's a ledge that sticks out that you can catch beforehand. Though, at the same time, you kind of sacrifice uh, doing the harsh fall. Up to Ratio Rock, one of the uh, most important uh, movement sections. This time, we don't have to go all the way up to Acrobatics. Etiquette doing a nice job avoiding the Clotaddle at the bottom here. Spider, no problems. In fact, very smooth movement on his side of things. Dynam doing the second part. Ooh, a little bit of a... Uh, uh, one of, just a Pokemon in the way, but it was only one and not a spawn of five. Close, Amber, trying to dodge all the Spoinks here. Going to reset those BLJs, but gets it very nicely here on that first section. Ratio Rock, notorious for sp spawning hordes of five Pokemon. And honestly, they don't care if they're standing on some steep slopes. They will be in the, the way, those Deerling and Sawsbucks, as you saw there. But all runners getting through Ratio, Ratio Rock quite smoothly and now the uphill section up glissado mountain getting the first sections of uh uh the just the first sections of the snowy and icy areas hopefully they got their traction tires on Ooh, a little bit of a little on the way down for dyna but does not get caught out there in fact nice little mechanic where the game does not force you into an encounter if you would be in its hitbox while in the air it instead just knocks you back ended up Kind of using that to his advantage so that way they didn't get caught out by any extra encounters. So Spider the first now into the icy section. Well, Etiquette and Spider are right there neck and neck. Dynam is just behind and Amber about to make the section, the transition from grass into snow. Again, uphill through Glissado Mountain, an uphill climb. A time trial, the rally version of this game. It's only a little bit silly to see Coridon actually running on its four legs instead of Maridon actually using its tires. Ooh, Etiquette gets slowed down by a Gravar. They are sneaky fast and at a sneaky high level in the section, actually opting to use one of the Pokey Dolls. And now Amber and Etiquette are very close uh, for third place here. So on this way up Glissado Mountain, they tag the Fly Point, the Pokemon Center. You just need to get at least one toe 
onto the Pokemon Center's pad to activate its fly point, so that way you can return to it later. And now we see this way around the mountain. In fact, they don't even go to Montevera. They go all the way behind the mountain. Now this is the downslope uh, portion of the game. Uh, very slippery here because the slope gets steep enough that you'll see Karinon start to slide down. Might be hard to control. You might lose a little bit of speed and have to reactivate Dash. But there are some very important large candies in this section. You're careful around the trees because encounters can be quite tricky, as we see on Amber's screen. Immediately also going to be using a Polka Doll to run from this Clitoddle. Uh, trees are notorious for spawning Pokemon directly underneath them. In this case, it was extremely difficult to actually see the white snow of the Clitoddle. Now, Etiquette takes an encounter from the Snover as well, hiding behind that tree trunk, having to get so close to try to pick up that item. In fact, Etiquette doing a nice strat using the auto battle feature, or it's called Let's Go, to both uh, dispatch of the wild Pokemon, but more importantly, the uh, your partner will pick up items along the way. And in this case, you can actually get that item. They were large, rare, uh, large experience candies without risking getting a slow encounter. But Spider gets all the way to the north, almost all the way to the ferry base uh, there, and then just heads on back down. A nice little trip through the <laughs> through the Glissado uh, battle court. Dynam actually ignoring it and gets a bonk. That's a you know rubbing against the wall is going to lose you a little bit of time, but gets a nice slide down the mountain, unlike Spider who just went for the almighty leap. But all these runners truly excellent at minimizing those harsh landings, knowing exactly how steep all these slopes are, and uh, taking those low traction zones to their advantage. Dynam going through a couple extra chicanes to get that rare candy. Spider, no, another huge jump, lands directly near the stake. Excellent precision, cutting through the air, even without glide. Let's see if Dynam gets it as well. Boom, right on top of the stake. A brilliant pickup from these top two runners. They are neck and neck only seconds apart. All right, now we get Amber, same jump. Let's see if they land right on it. Ooh, just that pace away, but otherwise pretty good. And Etiquette, barely a second or two behind. So we basically got row one, row two as it stands right now. Spider with a just a slight edge over Dynam. Uh, going up the side of the mountain part, this part looks a little bit familiar, though kind of taking the longer way around that the uh, compared to the any percent runners. I like to call this the parkour section. Very tricky little spot. There are a lot of little ledges that you can optimize by taking some slides. Spider doesn't get the first part, but you got to dance right along the edge to pick up these candies. We'll see if Dynam gets a nice slide. Not the case there. Also takes one of those hard landings. Hordes of Pokemon can spawn in that section. It'll now be Amber and Etiquette's chance to do the parkour section. Let's see if Koridon can get some nice slides here. Not harsh landings. Amber gets it perfectly, but gets interrupted. There's a blockade. There's a crash right in front of her. Oh, no. Going down the mountain. And Amber's off. Amber's off. Didn't get the large candy. They've slid all the way down is going to have to do the backup and climb back up a horde of Sawsbucks in the way. An unfortunate look. Had to try to dodge it best she could. Unfortunately, just too much. The incident too wide. Probably needed a safety car. Etiquette was fine, but has now taken an encounter with an Ndidi. Couldn't get away, though. Remember, this Ndidi is level 48. These Pokemon nearly level 50 in this section of the map. Well, let's see if Etiquette, who couldn't run away for a second turn in a row, is going to be able to run on the third try. Third time's the charm. Gets away safely. Takes a little bit of punishment. Still not afraid of the Pokemon uh, spawning left and right around him.
Nice pickups by Spider and Dynam to get to this uh, this really high up stake. So you're going to see a lot of BLJs, the backwards long jumps as they are deemed in this game. Uh, nice little bit of tech where because uh, just because of how the game uh, handles slope mechanics, you can't just outright climb a slope straight forward. What will happen is Coridon or Maridon basically dig their claws into the ground and then start sliding down. However, the game is a lot more forgiving in terms of giving you a platform to stand on, as you're seeing on Dynam's screen right now, if you are facing backwards. So these backwards jumps can climb you up these ledges in a way that forward jumping would not be allowed. And that is taken to full advantage all throughout the run here until we basically get to rock climb. And this section, while not the uh, Path of Legends, the P.O.L., uh, we will be getting three of the five Titans just to have access to full movement, full map movement, if you will. Because some of these stakes are in inaccessible locations otherwise. So we'll get Dash from Cloth. We'll get Swimming from Bombardier. And eventually, Rock Climb from Tatsugiri. But we do not fight Orthworm to get High Jump, nor the Great Tusk for Glide. Those will be non-necessary pickups. Looks like there was a little bit of divergence. That or uh, Spider is just pulling a little bit farther ahead in this section here. Uh, where they're still picking up all these candies. Basically, the route is crafted completely around, first of all, acquiring and uh, pulling out the 32 stakes to actually get the four shrines to activate in the first place, and then picking up the experience candies that are closest to this section, or closest to that path that you have routed. Like here, just out of, outside of Artisan, Spider getting yet another stake. I lose count pretty quickly because they pick them up. Uh, they'll, you'll you'll see the runners get like a bunch right in a row, and then they'll go through long sections where they're just getting candies or getting extra movement and fly points around the region. Uh, does it does make for it to be tricky to know which one they are exactly on? I personally find that uh, rare candy that etiquette just picked up to be one of the more difficult ones where you have to do this pretty big leap, and without Orthworm's high jump, uh, you got to get it in just the right spot otherwise you might miss and have to do its backup again it's happened to me on occasion during any percent as well so through about the first third of the run it is spider with the lead now taking the pokemon league headquarters straight drs wide open as karidon gains speed 300 kilometers per hour Okay, maybe not that fast, but they are going pretty quick down these straights. We'll see. Ooh, Spider taking a slightly different way up the mountain, finding that perfect ledge where you don't even have to BLJ up that side, that mountain ledge that uh, that gets you around the outside of the league headquarters, but just tippy-toeing and dancing as fast as possible right through the outside. Does not take the big water leap. In fact, gets way on the back side of the headquarters into this grassy area. Beautifully done. We'll see Dynam try this next. Nice little leap to avoid an infinite fall uh, uh, location. It's very notorious for giving you a, a, a pretty bad spot just because of the geometry of the mountains. Dynam going very quick through this section. No flaws whatsoever. And now it is Amber in third place. As we watch their progress, again, right through the ledge. Oh, no, it's going to slide down. This is going to be the second time for Amber all the way down towards the river does stay on the eastern edge of the banks here but is going to take a little bit of time loss as she's now a bit farther down than they would like to be let's see if etiquette notice how he smartly stayed just to the right side of that uh, apex and is able to get down the side of the mountain that he wanted to in the first place. So well done there. It is close still between all four runners. Now look at how steep this BLJ section is for Spider. In fact, Karinon actually having a hard time finding any footing. Dynam's going to get back into the race just a little bit here. But it is so tricky that you have to find that ledge and then kind of glide to the left so you have a 
to have some good footing, backwards footing, to jump in on. Another big leap down, getting close enough to the, uh, remember these, these uh, uh, not light posts, but uh, watchtowers are fly points, so those are also important fly points to pick up. Dynam doing that tricky little BLJ. Needs one more and is all the way up. Probably just a couple seconds behind. Maybe around 15, 20 seconds in that range. Not too far back. Now does Amber doing all these BLJs. Just kind of finding the right spot. Look at that little halfway point. Ooh, almost. Amber got a little bit greedy there. There's a nice little halfway point up the mountain where you can actually stop doing the BLJs. And it is uh, eat, shallow enough of a slope to just run up for a little bit and then reset those BLJs. Nice tricky little movement here to the left, to the right, finding each little gap for Karaidon's back foot to anchor in and get up the mountain. Well done. Ooh, Etiquette getting surrounded by some Gastlys to the right. Avo avoids the extra encounter, but takes a bonk on the left side of the ruins. We'll see how much time that costs him. And also notice how that very tricky, that very fine little ledge jump it looks scary but if you hug the wall you can find some uh, a nice pathway a nice little shortcut to keep you on this upper ledge of the section of the game here meanwhile spider the first to get into uh gosh i'm gonna i'm gonna botch the city's name isn't it casa frassa i think it's Ca casa frassa it's the it's the water gym's town now i didn't notice if spider picked up the muscle band or not i think earlier Spider was noting that he didn't want to pick up the muscle band. Might be doing some alternate strats here. With uh, some higher special attack. Let's see if Dynam picks up the muscle band. He is starting to angle towards the center of town. This item right by the waterfall. All right, get it? Gets it? The water fountain. Excuse me. few X attacks along the way just for the uh, eventual Quackavel to be using. Listen, I tried. I <laughs> I tried to say cat as cat. I, I I can't pronounce it without seeing the city name directly in front of me here. Have they even made it to that city in the anime? Because that's usually how I do my uh, <laughs> my pronunciation guides off of is just how they say it in the anime. I don't even know how to spell it. See, this is this is the pain. <laughs> As Spider will be the next to evolve and the first to evolve Quaxwell now into Quackavel. The rest of these candies going down, and we'll notice that Spider gets Quackable up to level 65, and will be teaching an incredibly important move for the run in close combat. 120 base power fighting type move is going to just absolutely obliterate most of the Treasures of Ruin, because each of these four legendary Pokemon are part dark, so they are weak to fighting type overall. Now, that won't quite be the case uh, for the entirety of these Pokemon, because the Treasures of Ruin do come at level 60, so but being level 65 is going to be very important. So here's the note that I have on all of these uh, Quackables. They all have insanely high special attack. Nearly perfect for all four runners, I might add. Starting with Spider, he has a 30 IV Naughty Quackable. So just one IV point off of maximum. The same can be said for Etiquette. He's got 30 IV and Lonely, both plus attacking natures. Only to be outdone by Amber, who has a 31 IV Naughty Quackable, now evolving on screen. And Dynam also has perfect attack at 31 IV Adamant. So 
So it is extremely important, uh, as is apparent to all these runners, to have maximum or near maximum attack for their Quaxley, now Quackable, so that way they can one-shot or get safe two-shots on these legendary Pokemon. As in some cases, like for the Wo Chen, their attack stat will be dropped in half by their ability. Ting Lu is just a little bit too bulky and will be a two-shot for all these runners most anyways, unless they get a crazy high roll. It might be a bad range, but it's at least a range because of the maximum attack that these Pokemon all contain. I did also get a note from Spider that his Quackable does have higher special attack and was doing some slightly different strats with the Water Gun uh, on the Cloth at minimum. We might be asking him about his strats coming up here as they are on their way up to Bombardier or Bombardier. Uh, it's one of those. I, this I did look up the pronunciation guide to. Listen, Pokemon names are hard. Oh, Dynam taking a Choco Puff right into the face. Only going to slow him down by a little bit. But Spider, the first on the second phase of, uh, of Bombardier. And Bombardier actually has the lowest of the HP multipliers of any of the Titan Pokemon. So quite easily a one shot, especially at the level that they are all at. So Spider takes... Takes his lead and extends through this phase of the run. The Quackavel going super, super fast. So with that being said, let's head back down to the pit lane as Karaidon gets a bit of fuel, another sandwich, and we will say hello to Spider himself. Spider, how is your run going since you are taking the lead through the second Titan? Uh, it feels pretty good. Uh, I was definitely worried about the blizzard conditions on the track for a while. Uh, but I was able to make it through, and uh, yeah, pull out, pull out ahead, I'm feeling good. I was noticing a lot of the racers here were trying to use those low grip conditions to their advantage and being able to slide down those downhill sections of Glaciado Mountain. How did you feel you handled the uh, track conditions? Uh, pretty well in Glaciado, although I'm, when I was on my way down, uh, I missed probably my favorite slide. Uh, so that felt a little sour, but otherwise, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Okay. And we were actually just mentioning uh, the stats of the Quackavel, and uh, yours has the, quote, lowest of the attack stats at a measly 30 IV, naughty natured. Uh, but can you explain just why the attack stat is so important through the end game of this run? Uh, the attack stat is so important because that's just all that we use. Um, I use Water Gun a couple other times, but from here on out, that's all we're using. It's either going to be Aqua Cutter or Close Combat from here on out. All righty. And uh, how's, uh, how's Karaidon feeling? Feeling uh, refreshed, refueled with a new sandwich in here? Yeah, I mean, he's got a sandwich now. right now, and I, I think he's ready to keep going. All right. And then how much are you looking in your rear view mirrors here? I am not. I'm just keeping my eye on the road. Woohoo! See, that is, that is some solid advice, because if you're looking in your rear view mirrors then that means you might be worried about something behind you. Well, Spider, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, thank you. And with the remainder of your run. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Spider has done an awesome job uh, so far to take this lead. Well, uh, let's also talk. Let's stay in the pit lane. Let's head on out towards Etiquette, who has also uh, has had quite an interesting oh. first half of the run Etiquette, how have you uh, been managing this section, especially with so many encounters along the way? Um, yeah, I'm I'm really disappointed in my inability to see invisible Pokemon. Um, I really think that, you know, if I, if I just had the ability to, to see the Pokemon that aren't there, then uh, I would be doing a lot better. It sounds like you might need the Sylph Scope, because I think I... that was the device that was built specifically to see invisible Pokemon. You know, I grew up in Gen 1. We used the Polka Doll for stuff like that, so I uh, I must have missed the memo on the Sylph Scope. I did notice that you actually <laughs> were quite stubborn on, um, I think it was the Ndidi, and didn't use a Polka Doll. I, were you, what were you Polka Doll? Gonna... <laughs> I had already used both of them. I only oh, got no. two. I had already <laughs> used both of them. I already happened to run away from a uh, Snover. 
So like I was on my fourth encounter already, and then I think I got one more afterward too. But like they've at least three of them have been the Pokemon is not actually there until you got too close to it and then it shows up. So especially um, right by the trees, right? Yeah, but I mean overall, I, th I think I think my movement has been overall pretty solid. Um, it, it's just those encounters. So I'm uh, all right. Well, looking forward to the back to half though. Yeah, if you're able to come back, I think somebody's going to gift you a Devon scope on your way out. <laughs> Heck yeah. Sounds All right, good. good luck. Good luck out there, Etiquette. Thank you, thank you. Yes, the invisible encounters. Um, in the uh, pre-show, as we were uh, listening to our runners uh, get in the zone, we were mentioning times of uh, some of our favorite Scarlet Violet encounters over the years. Of which there are some very funny clips um, of jumping cloths and invisible Pokemon hiding behind the trees, getting encounters from Lechonks that are farther away than one that might be closer in the same frame. There has been some funny ones, so make sure to share your funniest or most cursed uh, Pokemon, wild Pokemon encounters in Scarlet and Violet. Uh, would love to hear that because. This has been uh, quite a showcase of such. So Spider is the first out of the pits. And Karidon once again full and on a full tank of fuel, be that sandwiches, uh, and is now running through again those treacherous, slippery, blizzardy portions of the run, getting some great slides on the way to this stake. And while some of these jumps might look like they hurt, it should be known that the tread on these Crydon tires and paws, I should add, are actually very resilient. They can handle those harsh falls. But in fact, a lot of runners will aim for rocks on the ground, see if they can't catch a bit of a slope to actually slide off of some of these random rocks that just dot the Paldean landscape and the track at hand can get a little bit of an advantage because you can lose as much as two seconds for a harsh landing if you don't need it. But Spider now getting into the water section of the run. Again, they have acquired the ability to swim thanks to the Bombardier. And now we see our first swimming section of the run. Crydon, a prolific swimmer. If you haven't noticed, look at those breaststroke legs propelling him forward. Oh, gets locked onto a Dratini, but is able to steer off to the right so quickly and be able to dodge that encounter. An incredible, incredible top tier reaction time from Spider. You'd expect nothing less from these world-class runners. Dynam doing some of those resilient uh, slides just off the mountainside there. Dynam about a minute or so behind as Spider is the first to encounter Don Dozo, the first section of this of what is now of actually three uh sections for this titan this dondozo part one and then dondozo part two and then the true dragon titan tatsugiri Ooh, we're gonna get paralyzed though quackable has been paralyzed by a body slam let's see he's gonna hit through it does an excellent recovery does not slow down too much there might just have to take uh, a little bit of time to menu off that paralysis. A few full restores can be found quite easily through the section of this run. So into the bags. This is going to be an unexpected pit stop from uh, Spider. Just using the full heal. Get rid of the paralysis. Auto heals to top it off to full. And now Dynam is going to start the first phase of Dondozo. So now close combat coming into its own, not worried about the defense drop right now, just because the Dondozo isn't going to do a ton of damage here. It's just the paralysis, or in this case, it could be confusion. Water Pulse has a chance to confuse, but is able to dodge that. And Dynamis through Dondozo cleanly. As now Spider starts the second phase, Etiquette starting the first phase, Amber is in the water. They are all in the lake area all at the same time. Nice horde dodge by Amber in the bottom left. 
As Amber is going to climb up on the lake from behind here instead of jumping out of the water. This is kind of the normal way to the Tatsugiri. We see our first X attack used on Spider's side. X attacks and X items raise your Pokemon's stat stage by two, and in this case would effectively double the attack stat available. Going to be very useful here. So thankfully, Dondozo's Water Pulse went into the Greedent and did not confuse, so doesn't have to lose any time or worry about confusion. In this case, a critical hit from Spider, and the Dondozo goes down. The rich indeed do get richer as Spider takes a magic crit and gets another turn ahead. W what a one-shot. Absolutely foot to the floor, lick the stamp and sent it. Now let's see if Dynam can follow suit in second place. Again, same start to the fight. Ooh, this time it's the Dondozo that gets the critical hit, though into the Greedent. Still no confusion. Oh, critical hit into the Quackaval on Spider's side. And there's the one shot from Dynam screen, keeping pace for pace. Spider finishes off Tatsugiri in two shots. An excellent maneuvering there, taking advantage of the combo of Tail Whip from the Greedent. Not guaranteed to your partner uh, what moves they are going to choose. These feel like true double battles. There's the one shot from Etiquette's side with close combat as the Don Dozo goes down in a single hit. Ooh, Dynam won't be so lucky to get an assist from Tail Whip as Taunt prevents Tail Whip from occurring. So this two shot's going to have to be a natural two shot. Oh, look at that damage. Oh, most just a sliver left. All right, got to be careful here. Muddy Water will drop the accuracy of their Pokemon. In this case, uh, was able to dodge that secondary effect and take down from Greedent finishes off the Tatsugiri. Etiquette has just finished as well. And Amber just only a phase and a half or so behind as... Don Dozo's second phase comes to an end. So with this, this will be the last of the Titans that we will see. The last of the Arvin plotline here. Done a bit out of order as most would be used to fighting Tatsugiri last in their routes. But in this case, we just need access to Rock Climb to really clean up some of those final few sections of the game. Those final few stakes that would not even be accessible via the backwards long jump, which we take so heavily advantage of. Instead, Rock Climb will finish up getting these last stakes that would otherwise be unattainable. But we don't need Glide, and we don't need the high jump. So only three of the five Titans needing to be fought here. And of course, all that extra movement speed from the Cloth really starts to uh, be taken advantage. You know, let's see if Amber can get a nice little tap in from the greeting. This is a very difficult two shot. I usually want to see tail whip or at least some form of uh, takedown to just get that last little bit of chip damage off. Oh, Greedent uses tail whip now. And unfortunately, Amber is going to be losing a turn. As we've seen here on PSR TV, the rich get richer, but sometimes the poor get poorer as well. Well, we're going to see how Amber is going to recover through this final section of the game. So for the final time, let's head on down to the pit lane here as Amber starts to refuel for the final time. Oh my and god, this is the worst <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> this, is so, this is so bad. Everything. So, uh, so, so Amber, first of all, I have, I have to ask how you may or may not be keeping your emotions together because I noticed not oh. once but twice... You fell down some major cliff sides. I mean, how have you been Dude, handling I've never done that? either of those things before. That's just like, 
If you fall on the first one, if you fall off the right side, it's like not that bad. You lose like five or ten seconds if you fall off the right side. Uh, uh I've never fallen off the left side before. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, the I... second one, I uh, just like, I just like, I don't know, I was flustered from falling down the first time, and so I didn't like get into the right spot. The BLJ there. I, and I was noticing, uh, I call it the parkour section, uh, which is just before the, uh, gosh, which, which center is it, like, near where the Halucha uh, spawned? Uh, you had the horde of, like, Sawsbucks or, or Go-Go's yeah. that were, like, all in the way, and I, like, couldn't believe that. Yeah, that just happens sometimes, and normally I'm able to, like, kind of parkour it, but, like, like I just got owned there. That's why I had to pick up the candy after Bombard here. So, so now that you got about 20-ish, 25 minutes-ish left of the run here, is there anything you can do to tighten up? You know, are there any settings that you can change on your Coridon to perhaps just affect the uh, handling? Maybe just make it a little bit looser, a little bit freer for the back part of the run. Um, I'll down pack so 1.0, and then I'll get glide, and then I'll glide glitch everywhere. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I do miss super glide. I do miss it too. Oh my gosh! I, can't I, I, can't I genuinely this thought I was gonna glide. die on doing your tail. I just like, I did. I forgot that how much damage you do to hit self when you X attack. Mhm. Mm yeah. So, well, Amber, best of luck because well. Yeah. You, you, after after this first half, you definitely deserve it, and I and I know the fans are going to be behind you. So you know, shit hey, up. Yeah. You know, just just tighten up the reins and cry it on a little bit more. Just uh, activate any overtake energy you have. Uh, you <laughs> I'll got do this. My best. <laughs> Thank you, Key Pat. All right, thanks, Amber. <laughs> Uh, still see, still glad to see that there is uh, so much fun to be had, even even when you're seemingly in the worst of ways. Uh, this category can be quite exhilarating, because as we've seen, this is a huge movement section. Both Dynam and Etiquette are still in the lake, but Spider has made it towards the wide, sweeping ocean segment of this straightaway. Just have to dodge a couple of these water Pokemon, some smaller than others, though a few Gyarados should be easily seen just in time. But this is on the very eastern or the very western edge of Paldea, out looking towards the beautiful scene sea, but now starts to climb right back on on this west edge of the lake. So this is the this is the part that this is just one of the areas that we don't see very often in uh, most categories. This far western edge of the lake, and now just warping right back to the center as the fastest fly point away here. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stake pickups. Nice little bit of tech to Spider to kind of slide down into the water. <laughs> But now heading towards the northern edge of the lake. Uh, we missed it while talking to Amber, but once you're done with Tatsugiri, uh, one of my favorite stake pickups is literally directly above the cave. You don't even fly anywhere. You just go straight up and pick up some more of these ominous black stakes. Again, we have to get 32 of them. Eight of them for each of the Treasures of Ruin legendary Pokemon. Their shrines will activate when their specific eight stakes are pulled from the ground, from the earth. Spider taking a nice little shortcut back into the mountain and into that slippery, snowy section. But the weather looks good. Look at that precarious stake right on the edge. You don't want to miss that one. But takes it nice and easy overall. And the first of our legendary Pokemon has awakened for Spider. As we will be seeing Tinglu be the first treasure of ruin. Still has a little ways to go. Has to kind of climb back towards the uh back towards these low lands here. Let's go carrot trail. With all the orange grasslands here, traction is high in this section. Just got to make a little leap over the water. No big issue here. 
And one final drop down to our first shrine, where we will see and battle Ting Lu. The legendary Pokemon are at level 60. Oh, <laughs> looks like Dynam having a bit of trouble getting uh, to that very precariously placed stake on the edge here. Let's see if we can take a little bit of a listen into the Treasures of Ruin legendary theme. Ooh, does not get the one shot here. Close combat, dropping the stats. Ting Lu gets a little bit challenging. Well, that's the special attack stat that is dropped, so just did not get the one shot there. Even with maximum attack, Ting Lu is the most difficult to one shot. It's, I believe it's a terrible range at best. I think if we get a magic crit, we will be in there. Well, now it will be Dynam's turn. By the way, the category was incepted because the Treasures of Ruin have a really excellent theme to them. Unfortunately, with most of them being one shots or two shots, we don't actually hear much of the theme, so we might have to do a little bit of our own research uh, in our own time here. But it is kind of funny that um, the the will to want to listen to these themes is what kind of incepted the category in the first place, and then the category uh, just spends all of five seconds in battle anyways. Dynam does get the one shot against the Tinglu. Does get the magic crit. Dynam gets the one shot against Tinglu. An incredible bout here for the second place, man. That is going to help massively in that catch-up. And he is out of there. Listens to the lowest amount of the legendary theme. What a massive upset that was. Now we've got a race on our hands as they are into the Western Province, into the home stretches. Do either of the Karadans still have gas left in the tank? Are they managing their pace? Or are they going to run out of tire by the end? Now it is Spider into the tunnel. And watch as he will take the U-turn straight on out of here. He just needed that little bit to get one more of those stakes. Only a few remaining here, so I have to activate the other three treasures of Ruin. And now we finally see Amber onto Ting Lu. Let's see if we can get another one shot here. The Vessel of Ruin ability, dropping the special attack of all Pokemon on the field. Thankfully, close combat is physical, and it's going to get the one shot. Excellent job by Amber getting the single shot against Ting Lu. Not a favorable range, but a wonderful sight to see. So a nice little pick up there. It's the home stretch for these runners. It is now into the South Province for Spider. You can you can see that movement. You can you can almost tell the eyes of the riders here, just scanning the horizon left to right, making sure that there are no wild Pokemon in the way, or in some cases, invisible wild Pokemon. Sometimes you can just sense their presence or their aura on your way through these fields in order to dodge all of them. It can be a tricky skill, but these runners have it. As you see these sections here, ooh, Spider, a little bit too far to the right for this. Ooh, a little bit of a slip. Looks like a gust of wind almost threw him off track and almost dropped him right back into the water. Nice recovery there, just counter steering into the wind getting the just the fingertips of the nails right onto the edge from Coridon just to hang on. Now sweeping from the south back to the west end of Paldea. 
Spider just has a few more of the stakes left to go. Just three more shrines to visit. But holding competitors at arm's length, as we heard earlier, he wants to look forward. He doesn't want to look in the rear view mirror. He just wants to focus on what he can do. A nice big jump here straight on to that stake. This is a nice little section to get out of as well as the second Treasure of Ruin has now awoken. Right onto the cliffside. This is where Rock Climb comes in massively. Just scale that ledge. As we take a trip through this western ex uh, section of the province, more rock climbing. Don't have to worry about the BLJs anymore. Just close enough to this watchtower, I'm actually unsure if they uh, will be returning to this one. And it's nice to see that you actually don't want to do the BLJs. You just want to dig those claws into the ground, find this nice little elevated platform where we will fight our second and my personal favorite of the Treasures of Ruin as it will be Mr. Hailblade for 360 himself, Xian Pao. Xian Pao, an incredible Pokemon. It's Sword of Ruin ability dropping the defense stat of all the surrounding Pokemon. Xian Pao outspeeding here but doesn't use one of its flinch moves. So even though it did more than half damage to Spider, was able to avoid a flinch and make sure to get his attack off to defeat now his second of the Treasure's Ruin. Look at how close Dynam and Etiquette are right now. Dynam is now starting Chi and Pao as, as well. Is it too hot to shivery chill today? We've had record heat across most of Paldea, it seems. But Chi Pao stands strong. Chi Pao using Ruination. Does a little over half damage, but no flinch. That's what you want to see here. So it is just seconds apart now for second place between Dynam and Etiquette. It's only about three seconds between them. This is going to be really, really close. And we want to hear what your favorite Treasure of Ruin legendary Pokemon is. Is it Chien Pao? Is it Ting Lu? Wo Chen? Or maybe the fish Chi Yu? We we want everybody to vote in chat right now who their favorite of these four legendary Pokemon are. Ooh, a little bit of an uh, ooh, a little bit of an awkward movement from Spider. He's all the way down into the water, trying to just slightly get down onto that ledge of the building, and ended up using the rock climb ability. And was a bit in an awkward spot. Tried to just subtly jump down. But instead, Karadon took a big leap off. Is going to lose a little bit of time. Thankfully, has a bit of a buffer in the lead here. But just went wide on that section. Let's see if Dynam can get this a little bit more accurately. And does. Just takes that ledge perfectly. It is starting to get pretty close as Amber now begins the second of the Treasures of Ruin, Chi and Pal. Or actually just finishes uh, Chi and Pal, excuse me. And I know that Chi and Pal is supposed to be the embodiment of evil snow, but like, why would, why did they make Chi and Pal uh, friend shaped? Because I think Chi and Pal is a friend. Because he's just a cute, misunderstood little guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's all, it looks like it's almost within a minute here of our top three runners so close. And we've had some great races on the channel before from all the tournament races that you've seen recently. This one, just another one. Could this be a possible tournament in the future? Maybe, maybe not. But a nice showcase by these four runners. As the third treasure of ruin, legendary Pokemon has now awakened and it's right below Spider perfectly routing to get that eighth stake for this Pokemon and be directly above its lair. And chat, we will need a live Wo Chen reaction for our third legendary Pokemon. Wo Chen's ability, the Tablets of Ruin, does drop the attack stats of all the surrounding Pokemon. But even with that being said, close combat, oh, actually does enough to stifle the Quackable, the attack stack drop now made it a two shot and the Quackable is down! Spider has been crit! He is down and Dynam is coming around the corner with Wo Chen is going to take the lead! Etikin is right behind him! This is now gonna be a race for the win because of the Tablets of Ruin! And Dynam gets the one shot, wow, wow, wow! So Spider is going to have to travel all the way back to the shrine and see how much pace can be recovered. Etiquette gets the one shot and is now comfortably in second place here. Amber is not too far behind either. An unbelievable turn of events. We have seen some wild ranges hit and missed on all of our runners. From missing the Oko on the cloth to not killing the Wo Chen, an absolutely unbelievable turn of events. And there is only one more fight to go, only one more legendary Pokemon to be fought, and it is the fish. You see the waterfall on Dynam's screen. We know we are getting close. A few more stakes left to go in the single digits now. Amber has made it also to the shrine and is fighting Wo Chen right now. Is that a bit more of a comfortable HP? Let's see if she can get the one spot and does. And Spider has now finally just returned. Unfortunate to not have any relevant fly points anywhere closer. Basically had to do the entirety. Of that movement section all over again. So we see Dynam up towards this very tall section. I believe this is close to Lavencia, getting towards the quarry on the eastern edge of the map. Meanwhile, Etiquette getting a couple of different stakes here. Might be a slightly different section of the East Province here. We'll, we'll see how these two runners attack the final section of the game it is truly the home stretch in fact if it if it is like for like i think etiquette just took the lead here but there might be one stake difference there has been so much action going on this has been an incredible hour of the treasure of ruins race aka the paldean grand prix Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of a different pathing here. Etiquette picking up 
this latest steak. Let's see, is this the last one? If memory serves me correctly, it might be. Oh, not quite. Didn't get the uh, didn't get the roar yet. Dynam trying to activate the uh, the rock climb ability can be tricky when the Karidon just wants to stand on its four legs versus climb straight up these mountain cliffs. Man, it is seconds apart here. As Dynam is the first to get the Chi Yu activation. Etiquette slips a little bit farther down and into the water. Is gonna lose a couple seconds towards this final stake. Ooh, Dynam is in a kind of a tricky spot. Is like on the ledge here, is trying to find a way to get off. They are just 20 seconds apart. Oh, look at. Look at how awkward, look at how many Noibats. This could be the difference of the race. They're almost both getting into the shrines and Anakin gets an encounter right before the end. The Noibats, which populate this cave. Offering so much of a challenge to both runners. Dynam got stuck on the ceiling. Etiquette just rushes straight from the water, but does hit the encounter. Look at how close they're going to be in the Chiyu fight at the same time. Again, this is the big one, the fastest speed. Chi Yu with the beads of ruin. Chi Yu obliterates Meowskarada. That's why these runners have to use Quackable. And Aqua Cutter cleans up from Dynam and is going to cross the finish line. And it's Dynam who wins the Treasure of Ruins race with a final time of 105.57. Etiquette comes home in second, gets a 106 06. They were just nine seconds apart crossing the finish line. How wild was that? That was an unbelievable race all the way to the end, just nine seconds apart with Dynam in first place and Etiquette in second. And we will welcome you both back in. First of all, congratulations to the both of you. How was that for a race near the end there? Thanks. I, got, I found a new ratio rock, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were just saying you got stuck on the ceiling and then Etiquette was almost saw a gap to take towards yep. the shrine and then got hit by the Noibat right at the end. Yeah, uh, it happens. That's classic cool. Scarlet Violet for you. Also the fact that because this room in particular is like the only place that Pokemon can spawn, everything spawns in this Everything's room. Everything's there. <laughs> yeah. There are so many Noibats. Oh no, it looks like ooh, Amber's the, getting ooh, Amber's swagger. Amber's walkable, that swagger confusion oh, no! itself in confusion. Oh no! Oh, here comes bounce. We were worried about this. In fact, Chi Yu being so fast has has bounce, which can paralyze. This might be this might be a good opportunity to heal here. Let's see here. There's there's a yeah, full restore. Yeah, I just got that's a full restore. A, that's a perfect use of the full restore to get rid of the confusion at the same time. Amber's had what such bad luck this whole run. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. though. <laughs> Let's see her. Gets hit by balance. Does not get paralyzed. This time we're going to see a lava plume. It's a 48, but this should be it. And the Chi Yu has fainted, and Amber is going to cross the line in third place with a time of 108.19. So congratulations, Amber. That was a wild final fight you just had. Wow, that was one of the more interesting. It didn't use bounce, I guess. Well, it didn't use bounce turn one, I guess. It did. It, it did eventually use bounce against you, but uh, you got a, you, yes. you, you got the full restore. Yeah. Um, wow. And, and we'll and we'll still let uh, Spider finish up, but uh, I'll try to. Um, <laughs> I can't beat the fourth one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So is that like? I don't know what will you call that—a feature of uh, of it. Yeah. Or like, I didn't know it did that. I've yeah, never missed that range before. 
But also getting you usually live the power whip, I think. Mm -hmm. Or like but it crit you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got crit. So I was just omega unlucky. So so and what then I somehow like... get the cutscene trigger, which I don't understand because I took the same path I normally do. <laughs> That, that was unreal to cameo. see that, because because you went all the way back to the shrine, and then it looks like you talked to the shrine. I was like, wait, can I can I not fight that? And that that's news to me too. I outsped you. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I, I could you. you. Hey. <laughs> so oh God. so at thirty one IV neutral, the Chiyu always outspeeds the duck. So the fact that three of us outsped it is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, so Spider, can, so congrats ish on finishing. Yeah. Kind of, you know, 109.54, sure. still putting on a good show. I will say, Spire, you definitely led for most of the race, but to have that wild amount of luck, I mean, what, what was going through your mind at that time that you got crit by the Wo Chen? Um, kind of disbelief, because like I said, I... I knew that Wochian was a range without muscle band, but I've never missed it before. Oh, and that's so I was right. like, you did skip muscle band. Yeah, and so like I don't know. It's I kind of had it coming, but also just I've never missed it before, so I wasn't expecting to miss it now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you the the entertainment factor was was, was up there. Truly a live <laughs> Wochian oh, reaction again. moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this, this was so much fun to see. And by the way, this was so much fun to commentate for this last hour and 10 minutes. Just the just the insanity from, from the movement and the skill that you have all provided to the surprisingly missed, high amount of missed ranges that we have now learned about through the course of this run. Uh, seeing some wild crits uh this was this was really special and and hopefully chat uh really enjoyed this as well um but does anybody have like any kind of like special comments or any observations that uh that i may have missed that they that they wanted to touch up on um so on the one hand i got confused a bunch and i got ratioed a bunch in movement on the other hand i got the Tang Lu range which is very unlikely so i i feel like i won the race basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also ended up critting the Tinglu on my end, so. Yeah, I was popping off at the uh, the Tinglu one shot. I like couldn't believe it when I saw it. Well, it seems like the shrine won't open again for a little while. Yep. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Let's see if what Sandy said is correct. Oh yeah, maybe you could do like a like a raid den trick. Is that a thing in Scarlet and Violet? The the raid den yeah, tracer. Is that it works. Sword and it works differently, but there is something like that. Yeah, but it works a little bit differently. Uh, no, it looks like it has to be like a game. Yeah. Or something. Oh wait, that's over there. So. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to trick the game. Yep. No. No go. <laughs> so in terms of like crazy Scarlet Violet categories, how does this rank among those? Well, this is basically the only one I've run in the past, like, <laughs> year and a half, so... I like it. It's pretty fun. It's, yeah, I really uh, it's, the... it's different. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. There was, like, a whole, like, phase where, like, Amber, Spider, and I were, like, just in VC, just, like, ratting it out. <laughs> it yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of really cool movement stuff that you, like, wouldn't see normally. Right, like mm -hmm. the the jump you do around the dark base. That's a perfect example. Like you're never doing that in any other category, um, but just like this arbitrary list of places you have to go in Paldea forces. Oh it. yeah, that that jump. It's like it looks so narrow and so tight, but I bet it's actually not too bad if you know how to line it's, it up. And it's go not on the too outside. bad, but it, like if it you miss it, narrow. You, you, you lose yeah. three minutes. <laughs> oh, it is very really punishing to miss. <laughs> you no, get the cutscene that I got in front of the fighting base. base. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And thank you so much to T-Pat for the commentary. I can't wait to uh, 
Watch it back. Oh, I can't I, wait to watch this back. <laughs> I definitely tried my best, and I can't pronounce Casa Fra Frasa Frasica. The, Casa the Rafa. Yeah, that's there. Yeah, I can't do. It. Oh, actually, <laughs> but before we sign off, should we should we plug the Cadex Expo? Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so I I started and run a thing called uh, Category Extension Expo. Uh, every month we pick a sub, uh, community submitted um, Switch PSR Cat Expo run. Some of them are existing runs and others are completely made up just for this, uh, like this one. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And if you are interested in joining and want to do some weird Switch runs with the rest of us, um, then join the Discord. I'll link it shortly. <laughs> Actually, I can grab yeah. the link now. Currently yeah. active, we have two categories active right now. We have um, BDSP, uh, any alt main or alt route, and then we have Sword Shield Starmy alt main, which I am currently in the depths of routing there. So, yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Just, just to sort of reiterate, th like this run came from a submission to that. So, like none of us had done this before. Was it November? November um, twenty twenty. Yeah, November. Yeah. yeah. So, like, this just sort of happened. We all ran it for a month and then sort of forgot about it. But then uh, I think with the, the marathon, it sort of rekindled. I think we've all done it. Yeah, I wanted to submit something recently. from Cat Expo, and this one seemed like the uh, the best choice. Well, I've been really appreciative to to see these unique runs, of which there are a lot in the marathon. Kind of, we kind of have our own de facto silly block this time around. Uh, and I don't know how much silliness this has on a rank of 1 to 10, though uh, some of those missed ranges might have something otherwise to say. Uh, but this has been a lot of fun to see, just like such a unique way to play this game and a unique objective. Um, and yeah, I, th I think uh, Scarlet Violet gets a lot of flack, but I, I, I genuinely think that, that this is one of the better games to run just because there is so much variety involved in it. So it was great to see. Uh, and I do love the these four legendary Pokemon. And the fact that you can fight them all in just over an hour is, <laughs> is pretty wild to me. Yeah, thank you, T-Pat, for commentating again. Yeah, and... for sure. Looking forward to watching this back should be pretty fun well uh well coming up on the marathon um we're we're basically gonna hold one of our ro runners hostage here uh so etiquette is not allowed to leave <laughs> because Bad. you have to do another run uh do you want to give us a little preview of what's coming up before uh we allow you you to uh feed your cat <laughs> yeah um yeah so up up next uh I, i'm gonna be doing detective pikachu returns any percent um it is the most recent detective pikachu game it came out in the fall um and it's it's a neat little run it's like a little bit under two and a half hours um and then more excitingly after my run uh make sure you stick around because omega is going to be doing white two baton pass challenge mode uh, which is going to take you overnight, at least for the U.S. hours. Um, it should be a lot of fun. So definitely stick around. We got a ton of the marathon left to go um, and a lot of great runners and great runs. Yeah. So one final time, just thank you to all the runners for uh, a great showcase here. And uh, yeah, make sure everybody sticks around and enjoys the marathon. PSR TV will be on through Monday. Uh, lots of good stuff going on, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you all around and chat in the call uh, and, uh, yeah, in the community. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.